This is amazing. I expected to get some quick looks at bluebirds, but these two are so cooperative. This is so fun to watch them. When spring migration begins, some species excite people more than others. Today, I'm hoping to find some of the first returning individuals of one of the most recognizable spring species. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding, and today I am at the beautiful River Edge Nature Center on March 1st, and I'm looking for one of the first species to arrive, the Eastern Bluebird. Eastern Bluebirds arrive in the first migrant wave as they scout for nest sites. In the Midwest, some of them stay year-round, but more of them start to trickle in during the first weeks of March. Joining me is Mary Hollebeck, Citizen Science Director at River Edge Nature Center and County Coordinator for the Bluebird Restoration Association of Wisconsin. Hi, I'm Mary Hollebeck. I'm one of the educators here at River Edge. I'm in charge of citizen science programs, and one of those citizen science programs is helping bluebirds. We have a trail of about 30 boxes here at River Edge, and they're scattered throughout the property, all, all about 100 yards apart. And this is a project that we've, we've been engaged in since the 1980s. River Edge Nature Center is a place that is on the forefront of natural science and education in the area, complete with its own charter school and specific programs such as the Lake Sturgeon Rearing efforts. The Nature Center has over 10 miles of trails on its property, and many of those weave around the numerous bluebird boxes on the grounds. As we walked, Mary filled me in on some of the birds that compete with bluebirds for the nest sites. Two of the species that are our big competitors are the house wrens and the tree swallows. And they are both native species, both do a lot of good for the environment, both species, all three are insect eaters, which means they're doing a lot of good for, for all of us and that they're keeping down the, you know, the insect populations. But, um, but the swallows are more of a competitor in that they just are pesty. You know, they just keep bothering the bluebirds to the point where the bluebirds give up and, and leave. Uh, especially if they don't have young in the nest yet. And the house wrens, um, they again are cute and have a beautiful voice and all, but they, um, they will actually go in the box and peck holes in the eggs uh, and take them out of the nest. One species that is not an issue at River Edge, but can certainly cause big problems for bluebirds in other places, is the house sparrow. With this particular nature center being out in the country and the boxes being far away from buildings, it is uncommon to find these boxes invaded by house sparrows. Even so, the eastern bluebird seems to lose out when competing for nest sites with other species. So why is it that in the nesting site fight, the bluebird seems like it gets pushed around so much more? I, you know, I think it's personality. If they just seem to be a non-aggressive bird. You know, if you know anything about swallows, they're one of the few birds that, you know, when you open a box and there's a swallow around, I mean, you better dive, you know, because they, they attack you. They, well, I've never been, they've come very close. We continue checking the bluebird boxes, finding a few other species in the process. Thus far, we've had some red poles flying over. We've had white breasted and nuthatch calling, chickadee calling. May have heard one call of an eastern bluebird, but nothing definitive yet. So we're still looking. We made our way around the trails, surveying the various bluebird boxes. Each box on the River Edge property is monitored by staff and volunteers. During the breeding season, many checks will occur during the weeks the birds will be nesting. Mary even gave me an up-close look at one of the boxes and showed me some of the bluebirds' preferred nesting locations. But even with the amazing looking habitat, none of the birds were present on this day. Being so early in March, and with most bluebirds not making it this far north yet, I knew I would have to go south to find some. I said bye to Mary and headed out. A few days later, I went to another nature center that I frequent to see if the bluebirds had made their return. I'm at one of my favorite birding spots, Retzer Nature Center, still trying to see if I can find some of these first arriving bluebirds. A few have been reported here in the past few days, so hopefully they're sticking around and haven't moved through, or some more have come in. So let's get to the habitat that they like to be in and see if we can find some. I made my way around the trails that were extremely iced over. Upon finally reaching the open prairie on the top of the hill, I heard something that made me feel hopeful that the bluebirds were around. 
I'm pretty sure I just heard a bluebird. I got to the top of the hill and then kind of on the breeze I heard those extra little notes that they have in their call. So I think there might be one around here. Now let's see if we can pinpoint it and get some looks at it. I followed the bluebird calls to a tree line that separates two parts of the hill. Here I got my first views of a thrush perched in the shrubs with a grayish blue back and rusty orange chest. There we go, first of year eastern bluebird, and it was in the appropriate habitat that you would expect for breeding, so these birds are probably scouting out places to nest. So really excited to be able to find one of these beautiful birds uh, so early within the first few days of March. The bluebird took off toward the bottom of the hill. I headed that way as well and found a few American goldfinches. I also located not just one eastern bluebird, but two of them. A little bit farther down the hill, I was able to find a couple of bluebirds. They're sitting kind of right in front of me now to the left. Uh, so at least two of them here, which is really neat to see. The eastern bluebird is one of the earlier arriving species in the Midwest and Northeast in spring. During winter, they reside in the southeastern U.S. and Mexico. Male eastern bluebirds migrate first, looking for viable nesting sites before other cavity nesters like tree swallows make their way up. Overall, males have a brighter blue on their backs, and females and juveniles are more bluish-gray. Eastern bluebirds can be found in open areas with trees, nest boxes, or other perches for them to sit on as they scan for insects. During breeding season, eastern bluebirds will typically have multiple broods, and males will bring food to the female in the nesting site. Nest boxes are a major help to this species, and are integral in preserving them as competition for natural tree cavities is quite high. To learn more about the specifications of bluebird boxes, you can go to the website for the Bluebird Restoration Association of Wisconsin or the North American Bluebird Society. Links to these sites are in the description below. This is amazing. I expected to get some quick looks at bluebirds, but these two are so cooperative. This is so fun to watch them. They're making their little bluebird noises, feeding on the ground, and just generally being a joy to view. I headed back, feeling very accomplished to see some of these early arriving bluebirds. On the way back to the car, I heard one more migrant species before calling it a day. That was a really nice adventure to find those bluebirds. On the way back, I heard fly over sandhill cranes. Um, they're starting to come back in numbers. If I had a dollar for every time I had a checklist on eBird with fly over sandhill crane, I'd have at least like $172. But a uh, great adventure overall. Spring is definitely on the way, and uh, thanks for watching. The eastern bluebird is always an exciting species to find during the first weeks of spring migration and for the duration of the season. Their beautiful colors and seemingly sweet personalities make them a favorite of many birders. Hopefully the bluebirds at both of the nature centers I visited will come back in numbers and be successful in their breeding efforts. I will certainly be back to River Edge to hopefully get up close and personal with eastern bluebirds later in the spring. But until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.